A very good afternoon and welcome back to the Touchline. Lily Kwako is an excited woman in the studio because she supports United and looking forward to their victory against Tottenham <laughs> later on. It is a wait and see <laughs> situation considering what United have been doing recently in terms of their performance, especially on Sunday against their rivals Manchester City. It was horrible show. But right now we get straight into discussion of what is Yamak to happen going forward. Jimmy Wayaki is joining us. G Jimmy, good to see you, man. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. You all right? I'm all right. After last week's win, everything's good. City are winning it? <laughs> we, we already have it. It's what? ours. It why, is ours. Why, why, why? You guys seem to have been assimilated by United fans in terms of being extremely optimistic. Why are you sounding so ambitious? <laughs> you already have used it. To it. We are used to it. <laughs> the pressure is what makes the league interesting. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> now that you have one hand on it, the pressure for your keep to keep for your team to keep winning. Yeah. That's what makes it interesting now for City fans because everyone is looking forward to that next win, that next win, that yeah, next true. win. Yeah. Coincidental, I'm interviewing two City fans because Salim is also City fan and looking forward to <laughs> their defense of. English Premier League title. Are you guys bugging it? We have already bugged it. <laughs> We're just waiting for, for time to elapse. Uh, but then again, we, as we were talking off air, we were saying most people are waiting for City to slip up. It's impossible for the reason that this will be the fourth, the fourth title in the last five seasons. That's how good they have been. So they know the pressure that comes with it. They're not, they not going to lose it at this point in time. It's like the shark, as they say, has smelt the blood. <laughs> and Pep is so good and very cautious to an extent that he will not sleep up during the remaining games, games. Because in case he does, Liverpool are on the radar. And that we cannot let that happen. I mean, remember a few years ago when in December Liverpool were ahead of us by nine. Yeah. And then after beating them in, in our game, we went on to beat them to the title by one point. And Pep will not let that happen to him. <laughs> The karma will not be good. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and now, now that we are six points clear, and uh, I think Liverpool are playing Brighton, uh, Brighton today, and Brighton are also not a pushover side. They they are very good footballing side. So we are me and Jimmy are here, but our fingers are crossed. They get a draw there, and then on Monday, City win against Palace. I think it will be eight points clear, and it's, now it will be Sela V to the title officially. Mm -hmm. Champions League football, as it happened in midweek, I don't know whether it's an upset, Paris and Germain, French money bags getting eliminated, and you know, now Messi and Arsenal, both of them will be watching United <laughs> <laughs> from the comfort of their, <laughs> their seat on TV. I don't know, Jimmy, did you see it happening? Because Madrid came from behind because they were one goal down. Well, I think that's that's where the, the class comes in in the team. And yes. Real Madrid are used to it. Real Madrid have faced the pressure. They've won it, I mean, three times in a row, which is a record. So they knew what they were coming in for. They knew it wasn't going to be an easy game. Yeah. And they, they knew, or rather even coming into the game, the PSG fans and the PSG team were so confident that they already had this. They, they were mainly looking to just draw the game out, but Real Madrid took it to them, took it to them, and very deservedly got yeah. it. Absolutely. Karim Benzema, world class, uh, one of the underrated players scoring a hat trick that <laughs> day to ensure that Carl Angelotti moves to the next stage in semi final. I think he's one of the most underrated strikers in world football at the moment because, and as Jimmy is saying, three times in a row, 13 time champions. That's, they are seasoned winners, they are serial winners of the Champions League. They know, they know when to up the ante and when to turn on the afterburners because. Against PSG, PSG were the better side, almost yes. for, for, for most parts of that game. But mm -hmm. when, you, when, you have, when you have Real Madrid, you have players in there that look at Modric, and then he came to the party that very night. These players have been there. They know how to go about it. it, it for them, they, they, they believe. When you come to the knockout part of, of Champions League, it's not a sprint. It is a marathon because at some point they know they will get you with the quality in their side. And that's just what happened. And... The sad part about the main undoing of PSG, you talk about Mbappe, Neymar, and Messi. Attacking-wise, they are three of the best trio in world football. But when you're defending, they're useless because they will never track back. And there's now that overload because they cannot track back. They are fullbacks, who was Nuno Mendes, and I think was playing in full full, their fullback too. They were overloaded entirely. So it is a problem because when you're going forward, they are very perfect when they are defending. 
they are completely out of the game. So I think that was the main undoing. And when you have Karim Benzema there, it was only now a matter of time. <clears throat> and uh, you know, what's the fate of Mauricio Pochettino? He's been in charge of PSG, Jimmy. Yes. And Kylian Mbak has been blowing hot and cold in terms of staying mm -hmm. or leaving mm -hmm. Paris Saint-Germain. Now that they have been eliminated again, like it was <laughs> uh, done last season. Yes. Do you think they do all leave? Okay, I think Pochettino probably to Mbappe United, is, is Mbappe really to Madrid. Yes, I think they'll both go. However, Pochettino to Manchester United, I'm not really sure. I don't, okay, for me, I don't like him. I think they should get Ten Hag. <laughs> yeah, fire some yeah, yeah. Yes, that Ten would probably Hague. be a better signing. And they should give the man time. Absolutely. Because you know, Manchester United, they'll give somebody a job after one year. Overnight success. Hashtag out, out, <laughs> out, you know. But they shouldn't look for that. Give the man five years, even if yes, he has nothing. Yes, yes. Just wait, Absolutely. sit down. To establish a project. Yes, yeah. let him build his team slowly and he can get Manchester United to the level where Manchester United should be. Absolutely. You agree? Yeah, and, and also give him the opportunity and the freedom to sign the players he feels will fit his yeah, system. Yeah. Because Ten Hag, you look at what the Dusan Tadic are doing in the in the Eredivisie in Netherlands right now. Top, top team and the way they are playing their football because he has, he has hand-picked those players because he knows they fit in his plan. So I think that's, as Jimmy is saying, give the man time. But Man United, they want this overnight success. He yes. doesn't, you sign him today, he doesn't win a trophy the same, same season. That is next to impossible because with a league that has teams as good as City and Liverpool, yeah. you cannot expect overnight success. You've got to give this coach time. And that's what is not happening at Man United. So I think for me, when you're talking about Mbappe leaving, there are rumors that he's going to be given a new contract at PSG. He's going to be the highest, highest, uh, highest earning player in world football for the last, for the next million. even two years, is I think. Is Mbappe looking for uh, financial muscles or he wants glory? You see, at some point, even uh, players leave <laughs> <laughs> clubs yeah. they are running FTLE well to join where they can at least just play for have some legacy and win something like Champions League. What does he, you know Mbappe wants? He has come to a point in his life, in his career right now, that he feels he's good enough to go toe to toe with some of the best teams in European football. And when you're talking about Real Madrid, it was the Galacticos of European football. They signed almost everyone. We remember the Zidane, the Figos, the Beckhams at one point. That's, that's how Galacticos, how much a Galacticos they were. So I think he wants to put himself in that category because for a team that has won it three in a row and 13 times, there's no better team for you to go and test yourself against the best because, as we have said, they know how to win the Champions League. And Mbappe feels like he's good enough to win one. So I think that's where his heart is at the moment. And winning with the two clubs is different. Yeah. Winning it with PSG and with Real Madrid. <laughs> Real Madrid. The feeling feel is different. different. The feeling is very different. Real Madrid, you're part of the legacy, you're part of the history it's true. now. Yeah. And Mbappe wants that more than ever. I, I think he, he, he wants to never be forgotten yeah. as a footballer. And if they've told him they can build the team around him at Real Madrid, yeah. it's, that it's, will even it's be a better. Good choice. And considering, you know, the era of Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi is fading away, and Mbappe was. The next one, uh, alongside Neymar, who is also going at on court, has been inconsistent. Do you think now joining Madrid will enable him to accomplish the mission? Yes, I think Madrid is the last step in his book and he's still young. I think they can give him about five years. Yeah, yeah. And then with the rumors as they are in, in Europe right now, in the next two seasons, Real Madrid will get the best free transfers in any history. club has ever, ever. got yeah. since the beginning of time. Absolutely. Because they, they will have, they will be getting Champions League winners, World Cup winners, all for free. Yes. Yeah. And if even rumors have it, <laughs> even writer, guys like Mane are planning to go there. Yeah. And they already have More preliminary Salah. offers. Salah will go there probably. And then with the likes of Pogba going there. To, to, and then you still have Vinicius Jr. and Kamuvinga who are yeah, doing yeah. great things there. The Real Madrid to come will probably be better the than one the previous known. ones. Yes, and yes. True. It's like building a new benchmark when you've reached the benchmark. <laughs> <laughs> you, know? you never think a team can get better and then Real Madrid shows you how it's done. Yeah, and you can, as a player, as a player, you can, when you put yourself in Mbappe's, Mbappe's head, you're sitting in your mansion in, in Paris and you can imagine a Real Madrid of next season with, let's say, Casemiro and Camavinga, then Pogba as a 10, 
and then you have Mane, you have Haaland probably if he goes there. And then you have the Vinicius Junior. You and then the Mbappe himself in that mix. You've got to tell yourself, I'll never get a better chance than this. And it drives you to going there because that team in itself, you don't have to do much. You just have to turn on your afterburners and score goals because it's a perfectly made up team. So if rumors as Jimmy are saying again are right, I think there is nothing that will stop Mbappe from going to, to Real Madrid. And talking about Real Madrid, Mo Salah has rejected latest offer from Liverpool, though he has, <laughs> you know, reiterated his commitment that, you know, staying at Anfield, despite the new offer getting turned down by the Egyptian. What does that mean going forward? Should we start, you know, imagining seeing <laughs> a, a Mo Salah in a, a different jersey, except the red one? I think he just wants you to concentrate on him now. <laughs> this, Mo Salah is performing right now. I yeah. think he wants people to be just concerned about that and besides if you are to sign a new contract now he, if he was if he is to resign with liverpool he can get a better deal next year yeah absolutely because yeah? if he still continues performing his stock will go up they'll offer him a lot more Wages will they'll be offer better. him better terms yeah and they'll probably even give him the unband so of being the captain for the team yeah so i think it's better for him to wait his time out because it seems that waiting is what Waiting brings you good things. He wants his, yeah, his, yeah. his contract with Liverpool to elapse. Yeah. yeah. And Something. it's almost yes, and coming to an end. Yeah. lot better terms. But when you look at Mo Salah, as far as his career is concerned, when he was at Chelsea, he never made it with Mourinho even into the first team. Uh, never came to the party as much as he believed in his ability. Never got enough chances. So he went to Roma, where he made a mark. And by him coming to England, he has... He has made a point already. He has said, I never used to play for Chelsea. Doesn't, th that doesn't mean I was not good enough. But he has, he's one of the highest African goal scorers. He has surpassed Pogba as far as goal scoring is concerned. So he has made his mark. He has, he's one of the highest scorers in, the, in a Liverpool shirt. So he has really, really made a point that he's just as good as anyone. So probably, P, I'm, I'm thinking from my side, he might just want to move on to, to a different kind of setup so that you, know, you can only know how good you are. Because they say Ronaldo has done it in different leagues, so you can say he's one of the gods yes. of the game. So you have to test yourself in different cultures of football just to know that how good am I. So you might just, again, he's not sure, but he might just move on to test himself. And talking about Ronaldo, Ralph Rangnick, the caretaker coach for United, has said that, you know, he's likely to start tonight against Tottenham. And like what happened during Manchester Derby was not in action. But... Ronaldo of the current <laughs> United. Is he Ronaldo you watched? <laughs> Jimmy, <laughs> Jimmy is laughing. <laughs> Jimmy is laughing. Really say Ronaldo, but he's still good enough. I believe that Ronaldo is actually, if not the best player in Manu at the moment. But then the problem with Manu is that everybody wants their own way. Everybody has been given that pedestal where they think they're the best. So everybody expects to be the best, but their style is just not working. They're collective as a team. Yes. You have, as they've been calling them, individual clicks in the yeah. game. And this is the first time I'm hearing about this in football. I mean, when do you hear that there are clicks in, in a team that do not understand each other, do not get along? That shouldn't be. And that's why Manu is not going to win. Because uh, they need everybody to work as one. Uh, as one, as a unit, yeah. absolutely. So you're and writing them off ahead of the clash? 3-0. Uh, <laughs> Well, Antonio Conte, can he, can, he, can, he, can he do it? Can he do it? Yeah. He, man, he thrashed and well up to Everton. Yeah. And Frank Lampard received a mm -hmm. huge beating. Four goals. Yeah, yeah. The game was over within uh, 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's how good sometimes pass can so be. So Dele Alli left Tottenham to come to Everton. Uh, oh, <laughs> get whooped. But he, okay, we are talking about... And people are taking these memes too far. People are saying they, signed, they wanted Ronaldo. But then they signed a Ronaldo without an L. Now he's a Ronaldo from Kino. People are, <laughs> people are taking these jokes too far. For a person that has made his mark in European football, as mm -hmm. one of the gods of the game, you've got to have some respect for him. And when you see sometimes when money is It will take time to get someone who will accomplish what Ronaldo and Messi have done. And, and I think it will take ages, right? Uh, yeah. And when, when, you, to... when you look at him, he's still a human specimen. The guy... Doesn't look like he's even aged a day. That's, 37, 38? Yes, that's how well he has taken care of himself. And when you look at United, even when things are not going for them, you, can, you tell yourself, when Ronaldo gets one chance, 
he'll put it in the back yeah. of the net. That's how good the lad still is. So I think against Antonio Conte, we know Spurs. We know what he did to City, he did to us. They're the masters of sitting back. And now because they have Delia, they have uh, Son and they have Hurricane, they know in the, the bag wines of this world. They know when they catch you on that counter, they'll rip you apart. And we know Manu, you never know which side will turn up. They might turn up and play well, but then again, they score, they go ahead in the game, and the game ends in a draw. And then you ask yourself, what really happened? So, and against Spurs, when you give, with the quality they have in their side, you give them that chance to go ahead, they'll rip you apart. And, and I, I fear for United, because if Raf again doesn't get the team right out there, it will still end in the same way it has been ending the past couple of weeks. Are we seeing a rejuvenated hurricane up front? Yes, I mean. Because lately it's been impressive, unlike how the season began when there was transfer yeah. uh, yes. fiasco surrounding his departure from Tottenham and he was being linked to several teams including Manchester, Manchester City. Yeah. And Pep said that, you know, four times they tried signing him <laughs> but their efforts mm -hmm. didn't sail through. Are we, are we seeing a rejuvenated hurricane lately? Yeah. yeah, I think it's, it's in general a rejuvenated Tottenham. Because Tottenham, I mean, yeah, they are a wounded animal now. I mean, playing in the European Conference, Conference League, which they got <laughs> knocked out, I believe. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. did. Yeah. So that is, for them, that is not where they should be, considering they're in the final of the Champions League, League a few years ago. Yeah. And Conte is a serial winner, so he's going to every game. We need to win next year. We're not winning this league. However, we have to play in the Champions League. And yeah, the Champions League spots are still open. Very open. So Anyone can qualify for yes. European elite club yeah. football. Yes, yeah, so I think he had the right conversation with Harry Kane, told him this is how it's going to be. If you're a part of this club, it does not matter where you are next season, but yeah. for the duration of this season, you yeah. need to prove that you are that guy Top strike. that is needed wherever you, you're supposed to be. And Hurricane has turned up and again is proving why he's one of the best strikers in the Premier League. Yeah. Actually not in the Premier League, world. In, the world. in the world. Antonio Conte, can he change the fortunes at Tottenham? Yeah, and, 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 and I, I think that's why we are talking about when you give this top tier, top tier coaches a job in, in any club, You've got to give them the power to bring in the player they want. You see now he has brought Bentaka and Kulusheski. Yes, yes. These are players that he feels fit right into his system. And, they, and you know Antonio Conte, is, he plays that mafia kind of football. You don't track back, you don't defend, even if you're a number nine. And you see now what Hurricane, Hurricane is defending from the front. And that's, that's what Antonio Conte wants. You give your very best, you'll always be in his starting eleven. So I think he's the right man for the job. And we just... We hope that Daniel Levy, the director at Spurs, will give him the opportunity to bring in players he wants and just uh, fuse his, his way of play into, into the Spurs team because we have seen him do it. We have seen him do it at Inter, we have seen him do it at Juventus. As Jimmy is saying, he's a serial winner. So you give him the right tools for the trade and trust him, it's only a matter of time now that they start winning. At least, if not the, the, the Premier League, they'll at least get the Carabao Cup. <coughs> So, uh, Champions League return leg like next week, beating Atletico Madrid against United. You know, Lionel Messi has already <laughs> did goodbye to the competition. Can Ronaldo also follow suit? I mean, yes. It was a 1 1 during yeah. the first leg. and uh, No away goals now. The no away does. goals now, and United are playing at home. Yes. So, I mean, Can if, they build on the same? <laughs> Probably. If Atletico turn up, yeah. United are done. But then. Like, like Salim was saying, man, you, you never know who's turning up. You never know what's <laughs> going to happen. It's, it's the biggest gamble. I mean, I can come and score a goal there, win the match for them. Yeah. yeah. And then just keep that clean sheet, keep that defense locked down. But then some days, you, you just don't know. Yeah, and I, I'm worried. I've, I've been much more impressed with United when they're playing away from home than when they're playing at home. I, I don't know how hmm. that works. You've, you've hmm. seen Jimmy time and time again. When they're playing away from home... They are much more comfortable side. And this has not been said about United for the longest time. But when they come, it's just they become navvy. The defending is all over the place. Maguire looks like the liability has, he has been ever since he was signed. So I think when Atletico, with the likes of Joao Felix, the Carrascos of this world, the Correas, and Juan Condobi, I think he was even rested yesterday so that he can be comfortable mm -hmm. enough or fit Koke. enough. Yes, mm -hmm. and the likes of Koke. So... If we, we, we know Atletico, we know, they will defend better, very well, but they will get you when they want to get you. So with a United that is blowing hot and cold, man, 
the two two of the great uh, greatest players of the game are going to say goodbye to the championship. So the attacking department nowadays revolves around Joao Felix. Not Luis Suarez is aging and he's not getting regular playing. Yeah, and I think yesterday he also rested for for that very Adam much. Griezmann, where is he? He was injured. He has just come back now. So I think you can imagine a front line of Joao Felix, Luis Suarez, and uh, and let's say Antoine Griezmann. Man United have have got to work, had, have their work cut out here because. Again, these are three players, you know, you go to sleep, they'll pick you off, Max. And this is coming in the wake of, you know, uh, transfer revelations surrounding some of United players. Marcus Rashford has already been told by Raf Rangnick that he can wait until the summer for him to leave the club if he's interested in doing so. Harry Maguire has also been you know, inconsistent <laughs> with, you know, um, overwhelming pressure getting piled on the new caretaker coach to drop him, regardless of ambient leadership. Yeah. How will this turn out? I mean, okay, I think Manu should now be at a point where next season at least half that team needs to leave. True. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You need to come building a, build a new project. But then even on the other side, there's all, they're saying that for Atletico that Arsenal might be going in for Joe Felix. So yeah. will that, what will that do to his mentality? He's coming into England yeah. to play in Manchester, so he'll probably want to prove a point to Absolutely. Arsenal that he can perform in England. Yeah, true. So making him even more deadly for this game. Wow, gentlemen, it's been a <laughs> very insightful <laughs> conversation on this particular platform, talking about international football, especially fixtures coming up and the headlines, you know, regarding what is uh, expected to happen. Champions League football, who is lifting it? Why are you tipping the favorite to lift it? Champions League? <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's a no-brainer. Uh -huh. It's a no-brainer. That's why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> ah, guys are fearing to <laughs> give their predictions which may not come to pass. Manchester City will beat Bayern Munich in, in the, the finals. finals. Yes. And, and that, 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 will, that will be a thrilling time. Yes. It will you be a classic. Uh, City against Bayern. Yes. Uh -huh. Two of the, the of most the decorated sides now in European football. Wow. Looking forward to see how that will pan out. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming through and sharing your insights mm -hmm. regarding, you know, uh, several issues pertaining sporting activities both local and beyond ranging from you know the rebates cs amina mohammed approved on sports sponsorship and you know football in machinana and even your initiative yeah give me bambe pc tambe pc tambe eh uh, jimmy yes sir mutaenda hii tournament ya kajado ya umse tunaenda we're going with downtown warriors now we're going for the title <laughs> we're going to win yeah Wow, good stuff, and thank you for coming. <laughs> it's been the touchline oh, happening every pleasure. Saturday, 1 to 3 p.m. Let's again catch up and link up next time, same time, same place. Uh, salute to our crew behind the scenes for making this happen. Fadili Atmani, of course, at the gallery, uh, together with the crew, the likes of Rose and the new kids on the block taking charge of our technical aspect of this coverage. Always a pleasure doing this. Keep peace and, you know, maintain ensuring that like cs mutai kagwe said despite mask off you can sanitize bam <laughs> blessed weekend and have a sporting one